Today we're going to be attempting to install an engine gateway uh, to convert our EFI engine's data to NMEA 2000 um, compatible data so that we can display it on our uh, multifunction display up front, our chart plotter. I'm using a Garmin, but this would work on a Raymarine. Um, SIMRAD or any other uh, display that supports NMEA 2000 inputs. Uh, on this particular motor, um, our engine uh, computer is right here. Um, there's a sticker on top that uh, has a part number from Volvo. That's not the one you want. There's a sticker actually on the back side of this, so you have to undo the four screws, one, two, three, and four, uh, pop that off and see what uh, the sticker on the back is as far as the part number, and that way you can identify which um, uh, engine control unit you have, uh, ECU, MCU, um, EFI control, or people call them different things. And then uh, once you identify that, you can order the correct gateway for your motor. And in uh, our case, I'm gonna be using the Fox Marine gateway. Um, I'll show you here how that works in a minute, along with links to purchase um, your own gateway and fully detailed instructions on how to get this thing installed and functional and working. Um, and then there is a connector. So there's, there's connectors on either side of the ECU here and here. Uh, but what you want to look for is the output connector that allows you to connect to a... Um, uh, computer that would read error codes, tune, or, or in this case, an engine gateway. On this particular motor, it's the connector down here. Usually it's hanging there uh, with a cap over it. You see the gray cap over it there. Um, sometimes it's in a bracket, depending on which motor you have. Typically it's gonna be on one side or the other side of the motor, um, either hanging off a harness like this one is, um, or attached to a bracket. Sometimes it's attached to a switch as well. Um, the switches are for setting engine timing. So um, let's get to the next step and I'll show you how this works. Are you guys ready? So this is one of the modifications that I have been most excited about. Uh, we wanted to install one of these on our last two boats actually just never took the plunge because I couldn't find enough documentation on it and um, on this boat I've been researching this stuff for about a year there's different competitors in the market for engine gateways to convert to NEMA 2000 protocol and I finally narrowed it down to Fox Marine and their engine gateway product and uh, here it is in all its glory pretty simple little box the brains are inside there as far as the translation from the uh, ECU um, to what uh, is known as uh, NMEA 2000 protocol to be able to share that data with other devices on your NMEA 2000 network on your boat if you have one installed. If you've got a chart plotter that's from any sort of recent years, you probably have the capability to read NMEA 2000 um, data on your network and that can be engine data that can be um, uh, controlling your fusion head units from Garmin that can be a lot of different things so let me walk you through what I've got here this is the actual engine gateway if you notice on the label it says MEFI 1 my particular engine is a 1999 Volvo Penta 8.2 GSI I determined the part number on the ECU for my engine, and it matches what would be an MEFI 1 ECU. There's also MEFI 2, 3, 4, and so on, and there's many other ECUs that the Fox Marine box will support. You have to determine which engine ECU you have first before ordering the gateway so that you get the correct one. Next, um, I've got a power drop for my NMEA network. This will plug into our NMEA backbone uh, and provide power to the backbone. It's just positive and negative wires with the fuse in line there. Um, I've got a drop cable that's going to go from um, uh, one of our devices over to the NMEA backbone. I've got an extra NMEA T connector. I'll show you what all that's for here later on. 
and then a longer cable to go from, uh, it's another NMEA cable, similar to this one, but much longer, to go from the front helm and console area to the back where the engine is. Um, and then on the gateway itself, you'll see just two connections here. Um, this connection with the black cord connected, uh, spooled up, has the uh, engine diagnostic connector on the end of it. I'll show you what that connects to in the engine bay and how to locate your engine diagnostic connector. And then the other connector here that plugs into um, your uh, NMEA connector, which is this guy here, and connects that into your backbone. I've also got my tools ready to go, um, my wire snake, uh, so I can run the NMEA cable from the back where the engine is up to the front in the helm area, some masking tape to hold the wires onto the end of the snake, lots of zip ties to secure cables, make sure we've got a neat installation, my uh, wire crimper, uh, my terminal crimper for these smaller terminals, um, some waterproof heat shrink uh, butt connectors. I really like these, whether it's for marine or vehicle installation, um, not normal butt connectors, but they're butt connectors that will shrink with heat. That's why I've got the torch here, little butane torch. Once you get them crimped on, you heat up the ends and it all shrinks down, creates a watertight seal and lessens the chance of corrosion at those connections, creates a really good connection. Your wire stripper and then your flush cuts to make sure you have a nice clean installation with your zip ties. We're gonna start with building our uh, NMEA backbone uh, tree. I call it a tree, I don't know what the technical term is. And here's my power cable. Usually they're going to be yellow, sometimes they're black. Um, on the power cable, you have got uh, three wires coming out that need to be terminated. Your red fusible connection for your power, your positive 12 volt. The black one is your negative 12 volt. And then this bare wire is the shielding. Uh, the shielding's important. And if you leave it disconnected, sometimes you'll run into problems, sometimes you won't. Um, what you want to do with the shielding wire is connected to a negative ground that is as close as possible to your battery. Um, if your batteries are in the back and you're setting up the power cable for your NMEA 2000 backbone all the way in the front of the boat, really far from the batteries, you might want to run the shielding cable all the way back and terminate it close, uh, close to the battery. Um, in my case, uh, I have my helm here, I'm gonna be building my NMEA backbone and the power uh, supply for it right there. Um, and I have a bus bar that uh, is here for my amplifier and my chart plotter and some of the other electronics up here. And this runs uh, from here with a two slash zero gauge uh, copper cable all the way to the back of the boat directly to the house batteries. So that is a pretty straight run to the batteries. It's not going through any other things. So I'm gonna connect the uh, shielding cable and the ground cable to a ground right here uh, behind the dash. First thing I'm gonna do is build out the tree for my NMEA backbone. Um, I've got three T connectors. Uh, you've got one, two, and three. And then on the ends, you've got the two terminators, which are required. You want to terminate at the two far ends of your tree. Now, some people will extend this tree to be all the way in the back of the boat if they've got other accessories back there, um, and that's totally fine. You can extend your backbone to any part of the boat that you need, but you want to make sure at the very ends of your backbone, you have the terminators. They're going to belong on each and opposite end. So you need two terminators, one here, one over there, and then enough T connectors or splitters to connect all of your devices and your power. This one I have connected here is going to our Garmin uh, UHD chart plotter and the middle one I'm going to run to power with the yellow uh, backbone power cable and then this one here I'm going to connect a long backbone cable and run it to the back of the boat where the engine and the ECU are to connect the um, Fox Marine gateway. So we've got our backbone there, the second wire connected, which is our power. I went ahead and zip tied it for now. I'm gonna clean up all this wiring once we get to, uh, to be closer to the finishing point. And then we've got that spliced into our power, um, which is 
uh, running again directly to the bus bar right behind the helm and straight to the house batteries and the switch in the back of the boat so direct shot very close no resistance and should be a really good connection for the shielding as well as the ground wire so we've got that connected next thing i'm going to do is uh, deal with this guy here um, i'm going to start at the other end of the boat run my snake through to the front and uh, find a route for that wire so that we can um, run it from the back all the way to the front and then connect it to our NMEA backbone here. And then once we've got everything connected physically, then we'll start working on the rest. So here's our helm. We need to run all the way to the back through the side of the hull there um, behind the seats and everything into our engine bay area. And uh, the actual ECU, if you remember from the previous parts of the video, is right here that guy there and i had to unbolt it to get the part number from the pass uh, from the back if you remember and if you're looking for your engine diagnostic connector uh, on some motors they're right around here on some motors they're on a bracket somewhere in this area um, just look for it and you'll find it um, sometimes they're color coded to be purple or yellow on mine i located it and it is down here it's hanging down there so this is what it generally looks like at least on the MEFI ECUs um, it'll usually look like this sometimes have a cap in it sometimes this will actually be plugged into a empty bracket for a holding spot um, on this motor um, as you can see it's not plugged into a bracket but it does have a cap on the end of it that we'll need to remove so I need to figure out the routing of the wire and the location that we're going to mount the MEFI uh, one Fox Marine Gateway um, and make sure we have enough wire length and everything and keeping the wires out of any sort of way of too much heat or water or anything like that. So let's go grab it. So there's the gateway. I've got the wire uh, unwound and be really gentle with this. As you can see, there's only a couple of wires going into it, at least for this application. For other applications, the wiring pinning might look different. Um, so be real careful not to tug on those. They will pull out if you're not uh, gentle with them. So I'm going to plug this into our connector down there and uh, then figure out where to mount this uh, gateway. So I've got my connector plugged in there and I went ahead and zip tied it to uh, this loom that's already in place. And I've got to unscrew that one screw to give myself room there but what I'm going to do is route the wire uh, under this trim piece right here right there and then mount my gateway uh, onto this wall right here right there so basically right there um, and here's two more bus bars back here that I use to connect all my batteries uh, two house batteries there starting battery there uh, and then there's two battery switches underneath uh, this guy here now I'm going to go ahead and run my backbone uh, NMEA 2000 cable from the engine bay area all the way up to the helm in the front. I've got my wire snake run from the front to the back. Uh, I try to do it through this speaker hole, kept getting snagged up somewhere right here in the hole. Um, so I went ahead and pulled that speaker out and I ran my snake through there and uh, gave it plenty of extra and i got it out here and the next thing you want to do is uh, get your nmea 2000 cable spool uh, laid out and then uh, tape it onto the end of this guy and pull it through to the front the other thing that's important before you route your cable from uh, the front to the back for any of your nmea devices note that the cable has different ends there's a male and a female end so make sure that the correct end is going to your backbone or your t connectors and the correct end is going to your device um, in this case this one here goes the male side goes to the uh, fox marine gateway and this side will go to the t connector um, behind the helm so let's go ahead and get it routed my apologies i've only got one hand for recording don't have uh either of my sons with me today but I went ahead and taped it on here and what I did was put the connector up here and the actual snake cable runs all the way out to here 
you don't necessarily want to put them right next to each other end to end um, because it creates a bigger bump and it gets harder to route through the tiny spaces if there are any and uh, it uh, also gives you more of a chance of keeping the cable or whatever you're routing on the snake if you have more overlap so i got that done we'll untape it when it gets to the other end now i'm going to gently pull it through the hole um, under here through there and all the way to that speaker hole and once we get there then by hand i'll route it from there up to that spot behind the dash got the wire routed through that speaker hole now i'm going to take this tape off the rest of it got all the tape off the connector now i'm going to put it up through the speaker hole with one hand and grab it from the access hole that is right there now that i've got it routed up through that hole i'm gonna bring it up back here again excuse all this wiring mess i am going to clean this up once i get everything routed so we're going to bring it up through here and we'll plug it in right there and if you notice i added one more t uh, i went ahead and ran a nmea 2000 cable to my fusion head unit as well that way I can control all of that without having to get a cell phone out to control the, the detailed settings and everything. Uh, I don't know how that's going to work or what the interface looks like on the Garmin. Um, if you look down below in the description, I'll put a link to that uh, in its own dedicated video. So let's go ahead and plug this guy in and then we'll clean the wires up and get everything spooled up. The excess cable on the other side in the engine compartment, um, get it connected to the gateway and take the next steps. And look at that, that's connected, ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna temporarily put all this back in the dash and lay my Garmin unit down back where it was. Won't permanently mount it just yet in case we need to get behind there. Now we've got the rest of the wiring. Um, and just so you know, I ordered a 10 meter backbone cable. Could have probably gone a little bit shorter. 10 meters is about, what, 30, 33 feet. Um, I wanted to make sure I had plenty of additional slack in case I needed to route it differently. Um, if you have your size boat, you know, kind of roughly measure and then get something a little bit longer. Um, for me, this is going to be a little bit too long. I probably got an extra seven, eight feet that I don't necessarily need. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get it routed, then spool it up nice and neatly, zip tie it and, and uh, mount it somewhere so it doesn't move around. So now we're back here in this compartment and we need to get this wire back to the engine compartment. So we're going to route it through um, right there. I don't know if you can see, but there's the uh, hole back there. We're going to route it through there into one of the uh, openings that the wires are running through for other devices and then back to the engine compartment. Grab it back there, plug it in, and I've got the wire in the engine bay. Came through this spot right under here. You can see it. There's a pre-existing hole there leading from uh, that storage compartment to the engine room and now I'm going to get this spooled up nice and tidy, put a couple zip ties on it, get it uh, located in a spot where it's not going to move around, and then we'll find the final resting spot for our Fox Marine engine gateway. Got my speakers screwed back in. Make sure to put them back. That one's back in. And we've got our uh, excess cabling spooled up, zip tied, and tucked right in there. I've got a little bit of slack hanging out to plug into our controller. Uh, this is the line from our gateway, the controller, and I'm gonna remove that bolt to be able to lift this up a little bit, route the wire underneath there neatly, and then get the uh, uh, gateway mounted. There it is, all plugged in. That box is going to mount right here, nice and out of the way with the connectors on the bottom. That way, if there's any sort of moisture, condensation built up, it's dripping down away from everything, not onto the connectors. So if you have anything with connectors that are especially just on one side, always mount them to the bottom. If you've got connectors on two sides, opposing sides, uh, I'd prefer to mount devices this way, again, to where nothing's on top. Looks like I didn't need a drill bit after all. I just screwed straight into the, uh, I think this is marine plywood of some sort, um, and got it nicely mounted. Again, connectors on the bottom and wires all cleaned up and tucked away. So let's go to the front and check out what our next steps are. We've got everything powered on now. Um, I have the key still in the off position. 
So there's no power going to the engine ECU. I'm curious to see if anything shows up without power to the engine, but let's see. So we're going to go back. We're out in our main screen. We're gonna go here. I'm uh, happy to see that media popped up. That means it's seeing our fusion head unit. Um, let's check out gauges. We'll check out engine. We don't have RPM reading, but that wasn't there before. So I'm thinking that means that it's communicating with the engine gateway because the engine gateway is getting power, although the engine is not. Um, so let's power things on and see what we've got. So I've got the key in the on position, engine still off, and it says your boat's total fuel capacity and existing onboard fuel volumes need to be configured. Sure, let's go ahead and configure that. Total fuel capacity. Uh, what? Engine data detected, enter the full throttle RPM for the engine. Yes, we can go ahead and do that. Um, I think we redlined just over 5,000 RPM. We'll go ahead and call this maybe 5,800. Okay, back to the fuel. We've got a 140 gallon tank. We'll hit done. Your boat's fuel capacity has changed. Set the current amount of fuel on board. Um, let's see, we've got a little over half a tank. So if we divide 140 by two, that's 70. Um, and then if we were at three quarters of a tank, that would be a little over a hundred gallons, uh, but we're under that. So let's say we've got, give or take, about 90 gallons of fuel. So sure, we'll tell you what we have on board. And there we go, 90 gallons, done. All right, so obviously it detects fuel flow even uh, on this MEFI-1, which I'm glad to see. I'm not sure how accurate that fuel gauge is, but uh, over the next week or so, um, maybe a couple of weeks as we run the boat, I'll compare this fuel gauge to this one and then upon fill up as well. And we'll, we'll see what, uh, what that reads. And I don't know if it's going to truly show what our trim level is, uh, because right now our trim is all the way up and this isn't really showing anything. So if that's not pulling from the MEFI one, I'm gonna disable that particular gauge later on, but we'll see once we're out on the water what that actually does. The other gauges, I've got my voltage. Good to see that that's accurate. Uh, it's a little over 12 volts. And as you can see right there, uh, I've got 12.2 volts on the um, uh, house batteries and it reads 11.6 on the starting battery. Um, but there's a little bit of voltage drop on the thin wire that runs from up here at the helm all the way to the starting battery in the back. So it always reads a little bit low. That's not a big deal. Um, but this is more than likely accurate uh, for the house batteries that this is connected to and the gateway is connected to. Um, we've also got temperature reading. Engine's been off, so that's uh, fine that it's low. Um, your oil temperature uh, looks like and reverse neutral forward. I'm gonna guess that this does not read on the MEFI-1 and the manual cable controls that we have, but I'll go ahead and keep an eye on it once we get out on the water to, uh, to see. What else do we have? We've got fuel pressure. Again, don't know if that reads or not on the MEFI-1, but we'll keep an eye on it. Um, you've got water pressure. Um, I'm not sure what this is. I'll have to look that up later. You've got oil pressure, and that's it. And if you want to add, uh, oh, and you've got your check engine, your uh, warning for your water temperature, your warning for your voltage, and your warning for your oil pressure that uh, will light up. And I think they also alert uh, on volume as well. Um, so if you want to manipulate these, go to menu, um, fill up all tanks. I think you have to hit that when you uh, fill up your, your gas tank so that it goes back to full and it starts counting down based on 
how much fuel you've consumed, um, or add fuel to boat, I think if you do a partial fill up. Don't take my word for it, I think that's what those do. Um, and then set total fuel on board, that's your total tank capacity if you wanna change that or correct it if it's incorrect. Gauge setup, auto configure, I think it just tries to guess what it can and can't see. Um, engine selection, let's see what we've got there. Number of engines, we've got one. Edit engines, first engine, engine one. Okay, I guess that's all that does. Um, want to hit menu here. Nope, that doesn't do anything. So that was engine selection, status alarms. We'll select on, custom, check engine is on, over temp is on, low oil pressure is on, low level. I'm gonna turn this one off. Um, you know what, we'll, we'll leave it on. I'm not sure if it reads or not. System voltage, coolant level, water flow. I'm gonna go ahead and leave all of these on for now because I'm not sure what that ECU can or can't see. Um, so that's the alarms. We'll go to fuel display, use total fuel, okay. And being able to go through them very easily. So my eventual plan, um, if all of this works out well, and depending on what data it reads and how accurate it is, my eventual plan is to get another one of these Garmin UHD 7-inch um, chart plotters and place it here, right here in the middle, and get rid of my uh, the GPS speedometer I just installed recently. And I went ahead and bought a new tachometer because this one is finicky and not working all the time. I purchased it, I haven't installed it yet, and instead of doing that, I just wanted to go this route because these gauges are known to fail every now and then over a few years if you want to keep the boat. So if I put that there, um, I know the gauges I'll still want to have more than likely are my trim level, uh, my true fuel level. And uh, if these all work out and read correctly on the uh, Garmin chart plotter, I won't need them either. So. These three gauges, oil temp, um, uh, I'm sorry, water temp, oil pressure, voltage, they'll be obsolete. My speedo and even though it's a GPS speedo, my speedo and my tachometer will be obsolete. Um, and then my trim and my fuel are really the only ones I would probably want to keep as a second set of eyes, even if they do read on the chart plotter. Um, so I might go that route. Uh, I might measure and see if I can fit one here, one here, have uh, this one moved up there along with the second one side by side, uh, kind of like the newer, larger Cobalts. I'm not sure what that'll look like, but for now, I just wanted to get this installed, see how it all worked. I went ahead and put the muffs on the motor uh, with water running just to give it a quick start and uh, see uh, if this thing reads correctly and what fuel flow reads, how quickly it'll read in the RPM. So let's give it a quick shot. You ready? I'm not sure if you saw it, that was pretty quick, but fuel flow read right away, RPM read right away, very quick reacting. Wow, I'm really happy with this thing. Um, okay, so if you're looking to buy one of these gateways from the different manufacturers to read data from your engine ECU onto your chart plotter, um, this route seems like a really good route to go. I'm on one of the older ECUs. Our motor is a, it's a 1999 Cobalt 292 with a Volvo Penta 8.2 uh, liter GSI. Um, if you're on an MPI motor, whether it's Mercruiser or Volvo Penta, I'm almost certain that they have a variation of the uh, Fox Marine Gateway that will work for your boat and your setup. So if you're on any of the MPI motors, multi-port injected uh, motors from Volvo Penta or Mercruiser, more than likely, you're, you're good to go with one of the variations of the Fox Marine Gateway. You just have to confirm the ECU part number and determine whether you have MEFI 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., or one of the other ECUs, and go from there. Um, if you are on a different motor, even outboard motors, um, they have a lot of different uh, types of gateways. 
um, with the different settings to be able to read from ECUs that are on those as well. Um, so if, uh, if you're looking to get some data on your chart plotter from your motor, you're on an older boat that doesn't have a digital dash or a glass dash, know that there is a way to do it. This was a super easy installation. The most difficult part of this was getting the NMEA cable run from here, there, to there, and to the back. That was literally the most difficult part of the installation. The rest of it was super straightforward. Uh, I'm really curious to see how all this works on the water and what the data looks like when we're operating out uh, on the water. Um, again, I'm on the MEFI 1. I know if you're on the MEFI 3 or 4, the amount of data, the parameters you're going to be able to see are much greater in detail. And you can see a lot of different things that you can't on the MEFI 1 and 2. Um, so some of the newer motors, you'll be able to see a lot more data that might be relevant to you. But for me, I'm happy. This is exactly what I wanted. And uh, if I find time eventually and we keep this boat long enough, I'm going to take this guy and put it here, either uh, a second one of these here in the middle, or I'm going to get a second one and put both of them uh, here and here and redo that entire uh, gauge cluster. So we'll see how that goes later on. We'll decide later on down the line. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the other video as well on how the uh, Fusion Marine uh, radio interface looks on your chart plotter, on your Garmin. Uh, I'm gonna post that as well. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you have any suggestions on other things to look at, um, different things to test with uh, these boats, um, or just questions at all, feel free to leave them down in the comments. I'm always happy to help everyone that needs it. Have a good day and see you next time.